previous talks have been just quite fascinating and resonated um, because I think that it's what's necessary right now in this moment, the interaction and relationship among faith traditions because I believe truly that we are the only way to move forward and to try and create a better world. And that must be grounded in individual faith and commitment to per, uh, pursue the very best of the faith. I'm a member also of the uh, Faith Leaders Coalition of Greater Houston. And one of the things that we are working on together is to come to uh, to a deeper understanding of each other's traditions and also working together on uh, the social justice issues that impact all of us, how we can lend our voices as faith leaders to uh, give more credibility or support and power to the issue at hand. And I was totally in agreement with the Sheikh about the religious persecutions and, uh, and the tradition of white supremacy in this country that causes us to continue to be divided. And my feeling is that we must really work together through faith to try and unite us all together. Um, I have an experience with what Dr. Hall was speaking about over 30 years ago, my daughter was in a school based on constructivist education in which they brought forward all of the different children and honored each of their individual traditions so that the other kids could learn about them. And so we have a group of people who grew up together. Uh, even now, they're still extremely good friends because they really, really understand each other because they understand the culture, the food, the religions of all of those kids. And so I've seen that in action. And I think building that kind of coalition among faith with factual base uh, experience that uh, we can improve our world. I've also seen it happen in my experience at the prisons. Uh, as a woman of color working initially with men who were white supremacists. Uh, I have seen them change because of the power of faith and the power of our own ability to transform. Because believe me, when I first went into the prison, I was not very interested in some of the people I was destined to work with um, because I had my own inherent um, reservations about working with murderers and sex offenders. But I learned to love those people as the result of my faith. They learned to love me as the result of their growing faith. And so many of the men that I've encountered have overcome their white supremacy and their desire for uh, the ability to oppress others. And I think it really comes down to the fact that love is what is missing. Love in the sense of compassionate understanding and mercy to be able to see ourselves in the other. And only through faith and all of the faith traditions, I believe advocate this. It is only through faith that you can see the other as yourself and yourself as the other and be able to love what you see without reservation. And in doing this by working together, and it is difficult work, I admit. Uh, I'm usually always the lone uh, other religion in a group of Abrahamic traditions. And I have seen them awaken to the fact that there's someone different in the room. And so, I've learned that we all have to ask the question, who's in the room? Who's not in the room? Why aren't they in the room with us? If we can answer those questions and work from the standpoint of our faith, I'm convinced that we can ultimately come to a place of reckoning where through faith, we can have the kind of world we wish to see. 
I don't know how many of you have attended the Parliament of World Religions. There's tremendous beauty in the gathering of faith and all people of diverse traditions sharing their faith, sharing their love with each other and really spreading the fact that we all fundamentally come down to the same thing. We're all seeking truth. We're all seeking enlightenment and we can do that together and make things happen. Thank you. <laughs>